Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. This video tutorial today is all about slope. So we're going to talk about the different types of slope. We're going to talk about how we're able to find slope in Math 1. Everything you wanted to know about slope will be here. What is slope? I like to think about slopes kind of like the ski slope. So when you want to go skiing in the snow or snowboarding or something, you're going down a hill, right? You're going down a slope. So in math, when we're talking about slope, we're talking about a linear line and we want to know how steep is it. In math, we would recognize that as the change in y over or divided by the change in x. When you see it in a graph form, kind of like you do here, you'll hear a lot rise over run. So that's a way to think about it. Much easier when you, when you look at a graph versus when you look at something like a table or two points, we want to think about it like change in y over change in x. So let's see slope in action. The first way we could find slope would be from a table. So they might give you an x, y table similar to this one and they would expect you to find the change in y over the change in x. So the best place to start, I think, would be the y because that's what I'm going to put up top. So I want to look at my y column and let's find my change in y. So let's find like what is the pattern? How is it increasing or decreasing each time? For starters, we went from positive 1 to positive 2. Well, we increased 1. To go from 2 to 3, we increased 1 again. And then from 3 to 4, we increased 1 again. So I know that my numerator is going to be 1. That's my change in y, my consistent change in y. Now let's look at x. So I'm going from negative 2 to 0. I increased 2. From 0 to 2. I increased 2. And then from 2 to 4, I again increased 2. So I know my consistent change in my x column. My change in x is 2. So in this case, my slope is 1 half. We recognize uh, the letter m as slope in math 1, so m is 1 half. All right, let's look at from a graph. So they could show you a graph, and as long as it's very clearly drawn, you could be able to tell uh, the slope, sometimes just by looking at it. So I would want to pick a point. So you see this is three points that I've labeled on this graph. Choose one, and I want you to, we want to figure out the rise over the run. So how many do we rise and run to get to my next point. Now this graph is in no way perfectly drawn to scale, it's just an example. Um, so we would just want to make sure, you know, we're using reasonable judgment. So here I'm rising one and I'm moving over one. To get from this point to the next point, I'm again rising one and moving over one. So in this case my slope, my m, is one over one my change in y over my change in x, which we know just reduces to 1. So the next way, and the way we're probably going to see the most often from, from now through the end of the semester would be from an equation. Uh, so this equation is so important, okay? This is called slope-intercept form. So this is the first time I'm talking about it in my tutorials, but we'll be talking about it a lot from now on. And you'll have to know when I say slope-intercept form, let's get it in slope-intercept form or, or refer to it in some way, you need to think y equals mx plus b. Um, so this is a linear equation. Anytime you see a y equals mx plus b, you know that you could graph that into a straight line. And we'll look at the different types of lines you could have. But within this equation, slope is going to be your m value. So notice I'm just highlighting the m. I'm not highlighting the x, okay? m is the coefficient of x. So m 
you know, pairs up with X, they're being multiplied by each other, but it doesn't include X. So for example, if I had Y equals 2X plus 4, okay, if this is in slope intercept form, and I would say the slope in this case would be 2. It's not 2X, it's just 2. So M would equal 2. Now they're not always going to give it to you in that nice pretty form. So they could give you something like this and then say tell me slope. Well there's no way just looking at this you know when we're math one students just starting out I can't look at this and tell you what the slope is. It's not in the right form. I've got to get it in slope intercept form to be able to tell you. So I know I need my y alone. So I'm gonna go ahead, this is what I'm trying to get alone. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my 4x, right? Because I wanna move it over here. So I would have 2y equals, now I can't combine 5 and 4x, but I can just rewrite them. And remember, we wanna rewrite it in standard form. So I wanna put my variable first, constant last. Now lastly, I need to divide this 2 out, because my y is almost alone, but not quite. And I like to divide it by each part of the problem. Some teachers will just do a long line with a 2 underneath. I like showing that it's each part of the problem. So we would have, I'm going to just write over here, y equals 4 divided by 2, that can reduce to 2, x plus, and I can't reduce 5 over 2 anymore, so I'll just leave it in its fraction form. So in this case, I've rewritten this in slope intercept form, and my slope would be 2. Okay, this, we could absolutely take this and graph it on a graph. The last way that we are going to learn to find slope would be given two points. So as long as you've got two points, I could tell you the slope. There's a formula you have to know. It's essentially the change in y over the change in x. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's just another way of saying change in y over change in x. The best thing we can do is label our two points. I need to label my y2. At any time we have written um, a point, it's always going to be x, comma, y. Okay, the x always comes first, the y comes second. So, good thing to know. Um, so, I need my second y, the second y that I see. So, I'm going to call this the first y. This is my first x and y. This is my second x and second y. So, I'm just going to label it. My y, 2. Now I need my y1. Well, I'll make that the first one. y1. So now I need to know my x2. So I'm going to call 7 my x2. And my x1. I'm going to call 2 my x1. It helps to kind of label this out until you really get used to this. So now I just need to plug in my numbers to the formula. So y2, which is 10, minus y1, which we said is 3, over x2, which is 7, minus x1, which is 2. Now we just solve. So 10 minus 3 is going to be 7, and 7 minus 2 is going to be 5. Now I can't reduce 7 over 5 anymore. So I just know that my slope is 7 over 5. Now let's look at some different types of slope that we might see. So you could have a positive slope, and that would be a line going upward. So I like to think about people on a roller coaster going up, 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 slowly climbing. That would be a positive slope. An example of an equation with a positive slope, this is by no means this equation, so I'm just showing you a positive slope example. Um, notice my m value is positive 2, so just by looking at this, I would know my line would be going upwards. We could also have a negative slope. This one, this is kind of like the people have gone over the hump of the ride and now they're going down real fast. 
example of this, again, it's not this one by any means, but an example would be y equals negative 3x plus 5. So my m value here is negative 3. And because it's negative, I know it's going to be a downward line. The next two types of slope that you'll see, one would be a zero slope. So you'll notice this is like a horizontal line. This might look like y equals, and actually we can do this one, it's pretty easy to see, y equals 2. Okay, so notice I have um, my b value in my slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. I have the v value, but I don't have the m or the coefficient of x value at all. That tells me this is a slope of zero. I kind of like to think of it like this is a horizontal line, a zero slope. So I think of a horizon would have the sun coming up, right, on the horizon, the flat line. And I think of the sun being a zero. So if you've got a horizontal line, you know your slope is zero. Just a little easy trick to remember. For this one, undefined slope, another way to say it is no slope. So a lot of students get these two confused because they think, okay, zero slope means there's no slope, but these are totally separate. They're totally different. Okay, so don't try not to get them confused. Undefined is the same thing as no slope. Uh, so this would be a, a vertical line. So an equation for this would be x equals negative 3. Okay, it doesn't even matter that it, it's negative in this case. It's a vertical line. Um, it doesn't even touch the y-axis. This is how this equation would look. So we've looked at not only the four different ways we can find slope in Math 1, but also the four different types of slope that you'll see. So make sure you have all these memorized. I'm Ms. Smith. This has been Ms. Smith's Math Tutorials.